for the Venador Middleweight Championship. And now, introducing the fighters. Fighting out of the blue corner, this man holding a professional record of six wins, one loss, and one draw. Standing five feet, 10 inches tall, weighing at 183 pounds, fighting out of Moldova. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the Rohitaru! This man holding a professional record of nine wins, three losses, standing six feet six inches tall, weighing in at 185 pounds, fighting out of England. Ladies and gentlemen, Presenting the reigning, defending, undisputed Venador middleweight champion, Luke Bixlow Bart. <laughs> the referee in charge, Neil Hall. All right, Venator middleweight belt is on the line. The champ, Luke Barnard in the white. The challenger, Stefan Gortoru, in the black. The cameraman still doing good work. He is picking out the prospects, doing his job. He's worth every penny of his paycheck. All right, you see the massive size difference right away. I mean, it doesn't get any that bigger for the middleweight, Luke Barnett, 6'6". Barnett defends an early takedown, presses against the fence. Be careful with his fingers and against the fence. He already has a warning. I hate to see him get a dock the point early in a five round fight. Boy, Cortori's got to be careful of those knees in this clinch position because this does have to come up very high for Barnett to land it. You know, one thing I've always said is Luke does a great job making 185, but I would really like to see how he would do going up to 205 pounds, go up to light heavyweight, put some mass on. You know, the, the, the one disadvantage he has in a lot of his fights is speed. A lot of these guys are a lot faster than he is. You know, like I said, he's 6'6", not the fastest with his hand speed, definitely athletic, definitely world class, but I would like to see him test the waters of light heavyweight just to see how he would do. Yeah, I actually talked to him earlier this week and he said that could be a possibility in his future. So that may be something we see out of Big Slow. For now, it's 185 pounds, looking to extend his win streak to three fights. Stefan Cortoro stepped in on short notice, one day in fact, after the Jason Mayhem Miller mishap. Changes levels for a single leg. Interesting that Cortoro is really pushing to, to put Luke on his back. You know, Luke being a tall guy, that's got to be a tricky guard to deal with, especially on short notice. You know, we'll see how this fight unfolds, especially if it hits the floor. Should be very Switches off, pushing in from the outside. Yeah, really good job switching his hips. Toro's kind of, you know, he, he's got he's got Luke's laid corralled, corralled between his, looking to work that outside trip. Yeah, Luke's putting his hand against the fence quite a bit to rest it there. He doesn't seem to be grabbing the links, but does need to be careful about that. Yeah, definitely. Pummels inside, continues to wrestle well. It's a battle of clinch position, and, and one thing about Luke is, when he was on the show, you can you best believe that he spent his time working his clinch and his wrestling with none other than the gangster, the man from Westland, Oregon, Chael P. Sonnen, my hero, the best to ever do it. Does he pay you for that? No, but he should. Fantastic intro. <laughs> <laughs> Needs no introduction anywhere in the civilized world. Big knees inside there. Again, a dangerous position for Cortoro. Cortoro does, does get the switch, but as you said, that tricky guard. I mean, look at where Barnett's leg is already. Yeah, and I know that he's spending a lot. I know that he moved, relocated to Spain from San Diego, and he's been training a lot. I can't pinpoint the name of the jiu-jitsu gym, but I know that he's been working specific, specifically on his grappling. Cortoro does move out to side control, but Barnett with those long limbs is easy, able to post and stand right back up. You know, and Luke has actually been spending time competing in jiu-jitsu tournaments. I saw before his last fight, he did compete at a jiu-jitsu tournament over in Europe. Oh, nearly had a beautiful takedown there. Boy, Cortoro is just stubborn on that takedown. He's got to be careful because he fought Gilbert Burns. Oh, Luke on a Kimura. Still has the wrist isolated. Again, that long frame that Luke Barnard has. And here's the thing, most people think it's hard to deal with a tall guy when he's on bottom. It's even harder on top. 
He can spread out and distribute his weight in, in ways you've never felt before. And I guarantee you, he can lock up some really weird submissions, reaching under, being able to tie up your arms and your wrists, making things really uncomfortable. You can see it right now, he's stepping down. He did have that right wrist isolated, now he had to let it go. Posh man towering over you, dropping punches down. You can't reach him as for the five foot ten guy underneath. No, it's hard to control his posture. It's hard to control from where Luke's head's at. When Luke leans over, his head's way, way above Stephens. So controlling his posture, that was downward nice right, right hand. Cortori holding tight underneath, wants to prevent Barnett from poshing up and doing exactly that. Luke's doing a very good job picking his punches, being methodical in his approach. This is a five round fight. He's doing a good job controlling top position. They, you know, picking his shots, doing damage, went ahead, changing things up. The title on the line, the champ, Luke Barnett on top. Stefan Corturo stepping in on 24 hours notice underneath, covering up, trying not to take too much damage. Mike Corturo did a good job of keeping things tight, being aggressive, trying to work in the clinch, but it was all Barnett in the second half of that round. Yeah, he walked away with that round, and just like we talked about, I mean, his posture on top is amazing. I mean, he's able to posture up, and Stefan literally has to do a full sit-up to even be able to reach his head. So if, I, if I'm if i in Luke's corner, I'm telling him, take him down. Let's pursue the takedown, get up top, keep doing damage. Yeah, as we watch the replays of the action here, you can see that, just the difference. I mean, there's just no way for Couture to deal with that if Luke is all the way postured up. No. The difference between the two. Again, Luke Barnett could eventually be heading to light heavyweight, but right now defending his Venator FC middleweight title for the very first time. You know, not to mention, you know, for Luke, yes, it's a change of opponent, but not much has changed for him. Another right-handed guy that's shorter than you, and you got a guy in Stefan, who he's got a totally drastic change. You're fighting a guy six foot six. That that's unreal. That's such that's a, such a total nine day change. But you gotta give hats off to the guy for stepping up and taking this fight on less than a day's notice. You know, uh, that, that's a statement to how tough this guy is. 100%. Well, you got to think Luke Barnett is up one round to none after the first. I think he tried to leave that stool in there so he could step on it. <laughs> maybe, maybe be able to make up for that height discrepancy. Kroitoru was sucking wind a little bit between rounds. Remember, he was prepping for a three-round fight, not a five-round fight. Oh, oh Luke the high kick. connects on a high kick. Beautiful. again inside very quickly very stubborn on a takedown Luke effortlessly picks him up has him off the mat looking for a big slam but he's got his neck tangled up and he shucks him off with ease nice sprawl there and it looks like Rator willing to fall back to guard that might be a mistake yeah and he's, he's got that half guard locked down with an underhook on the other leg and that's bad because he's tying up his arms where he's getting punched right now and he's eliminating one of his lines of defense by underhooking that leg giving Luke a perfect opportunity to pass the side now. Well, not inside control, Couture with the right leg high, trying to prevent the pass. Big slow in a good position. I can tell he really wants to isolate that arm and get that Kimura. Looking to knee slide over to Mount. Almost gets it. Almost had it instead, Couture regained half guard on the other side. You know, in terms of doing damage, I like where Luke's at right now. Get half guard in that very Randy Couture style. Sit down on the knee and posture up. And keep him trapped. And if and if Katoro makes a mistake of hitting a half guard lockdown, he's going to trap himself in that position. And Luke is going to continue to posture up and rain down hard punches and elbows. Oh, <laughs> elevating there the, for the guard pass with the flashy cartwheel pass. Pretoria trying to roll into a better position. Barnett just backs away. Lets him off the hook. Very interesting. Just kick to the body there, front kick as well. Good job on the takedown defense. What I like, instead of sprawling backwards, he met fire with fire, punched him in the head with his hip. Kotoro still working for that single leg. Relentless on the takedown efforts is Kotoro. I sense a big, slow flying knee coming so. Oh, there's one. Oh. Tie clinch, oh, elbows, beautiful setting elbow. a big knee to the body. Shucks him off. And he's backing away. Oh, 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 doesn't want to get up. Exhausted, frustrated. Such a difficult distance for him to mount. Just unbelievable oh. reach difference. Luke looking to set up a spinner. Faints the uppercut. Oh, there's the uppercut. Nope. Kortor is exhausted and waves it off. You know. 
I'm okay with that. Really, I'm okay with it too because that was that was not his night. This was not the fight for him to take. Big slow gets the job done. Yeah. Was... Luke Barnett over here to celebrate his victory a little bit. Give us a little commentary. Yeah, a little yeah he's a tough guy, man. And you know what? Uh, thing there, he was going to get yeah. on top and, and. Well, and what happened? You know, you can see from Katoro, he's basically like rolling his eyes that he had to get back oh. up and almost shaking his head that he didn't want to do it. And, and nobody wants to see well, somebody fine. flop to the back. And yeah, no disrespect to Kratoro. I mean, no. he, he took a, a very tough assignment, but I kind of respect the Hall for just saying, listen, I'm not, I'm not, let's not play this game. It's obviously yeah. done. Let's let's not hurt you. And, and Luke actually came over here to our broadcast position and said, I, you know, I didn't want to hurt the guy either. I felt bad. He's a nice guy. He stepped up on short notice. Yeah, he's limping around, too. He's definitely banged up. And it, that was the right move. You know what I mean? You don't damage that guy. He just didn't want to be there, and, and you know what? Defending his title, who knows what's in store for him? Yeah, obviously, the Mayhem Miller fight's out of the question since he comes up short tonight. I'm interested to see what Venator does for his next title defense. Yeah, Luke told me earlier this week he wants, he does want to take a little bit of time off, but obviously he wants to wants to keep moving forward in his career. Let's take it up, get the official time and stoppage. The referee has called the stoppage at. Two minutes and 32 seconds of the second winner by TKO and still Luke Bigslow Barnard. So Luke Barnard gets the job done against a late replacement opponent, retains his middleweight title. Stay tuned, we still got our main event.